je suis l'éternel ton Dieu. Quand il dit je suis l'éternel, c'est pour exclure tous les dieux qui ont est inventé des hommes, comme si des soi, il n'y a qu'une seule dette. Or elle se trouvera en moi. Il faut donc conclure que ceux qui m'ayant connu se détournant après leurs idoles, n'ont nulle excuse qu'ils n'ayant renoncé à leur essien au Dieu vivant. This passage was part of a sermon preached in French in 1555. It was translated into English and printed in 1579, and again translated in a larger collection and printed in 1583. In 1579 it was translated as, Why so? I am the ever-living thy God. When he saith the ever-living, it is to exclude other gods which are invented of men. As if he should say, There is but one Godhead, and that is found in me. It must needs then be concluded that they, which having known me, turn themselves after their idols, have no excuse to allege that they have not willingly and wittingly renounced the living God. In 1583, And why? For I am the everlasting, thy God. When as he saith, I am the everlasting, it is an excluding of all the gods that have been invented by men, as if he should say, There is but only one Godhead, and that is in me. Therefore it is to be concluded that such as know me and yet do turn away to idols cannot excuse themselves, but that they have willfully forsaken the living God. Both translators used Godhead to translate the French, Diet. You may wonder why we should belabor this point. Have we not already covered enough examples of Godhead to show that Denlinger's use of it doesn't have historical precedent? Surely. But this example is a bit different. This is a sermon from John Calvin, preached in Geneva on the book of Deuteronomy. John Harmer made the 1579 translation, and Arthur Golding the 1583. I doubt anyone is completely unfamiliar with John Calvin, but for our purposes, we should note that he was staunchly Trinitarian. Arthur Golding was an important translator during the 16th century in England. But it's John Harmer we should be concerned with. Yes, he translated Calvin's sermons on the Ten Commandments into English, some sermons of Theodore Beza, and published some editions of Chrysostom's sermons. His 1586 edition seems to be the first Greek text printed at Oxford. But beyond these things, he was one of the translators that worked on the King James Bible, being part of the second Oxford company, which worked on the Gospels, Acts, and Revelation. So yet another example of Godhead being used with a meaning foreign to Denlinger's outlandish claims. A King James Bible translator using the very word outside of scripture to translate yet, which the 1980 translation by Benjamin Farley gives as, there is only one sole deity and that will be found in me. The Holy Scripture doesn't use it the way Dellinger does. This translator didn't use it the way Dellinger does. How much more must be shown before the false definition is finally discarded? <laughs>